This is my final A2 media film. For my pre-production tasks, I researched the genre of my film and analysed current psychological horror thriller films to gain an idea of the types of conventions which were included. From this, I was able to develop forms and conventions of real horror films into my own film and ancillary text to make them as authentic and successful as possible. My film includes all the typical conventions found in the horror films I researched, such as dark low-key lighting to portray a mysterious atmosphere, which I found was used effectively in a successful film, Shutter Island, to create the feeling of paranoia and confusion. I also used high-angle shots to portray power, quick cuts to show the pace of the action, close-ups on important focuses, which I found from my research to be successful when used in the short drama You Be Dead. My ancillary text used the typical colours of the horror genre. From my research, I found that the colours red, black and white were typical conventions found on both horror posters and in the magazine reviews. I therefore incorporated these into my own product so the audience could immediately recognise the genre of my film. I also found that having a large central main image occurred in all of the posters I researched, so I included an image of my protagonist on my film poster, using the same position in the real posters I had researched did. In the image I had used, I wanted the facial expressions on the protagonist's face to tell a story and show the audience how she felt, just like the real posters did. I therefore posed her to look frightened by covering half of her face and asking her to pose with fright in her eyes. To ensure my film poster and magazine review looked authentic, I included all of the conventions I found on the current ones I had researched. This included using a mast hedge, age certificate and a strap line on my film poster and a mast head strap line, main page, page numbers and website on my magazine review. I ensured that my film and ancillary text all tied in well together. I did this by firstly ensuring each product used the typical conventions of the horror genre. Both ancillary texts follow the same colour scheme, using black, white and red as the only colours used, as these were found to be the typical colours of the horror genre. Including these colours on my poster and magazine review meant that both pieces were tied together well and the genre of my film could be immediately recognised. The use of the dark colours on my film poster and film review tie in with the use of the dark door low-key lighting used within the film. Another way I ensured my main product and ancillary text tied in together was by using the protagonist in my film for the main image on my poster. I did this as I found it was successfully used in all of the film posters I analysed, for example the Inception poster. I also used the same image on my magazine view to ensure it tied in with my poster and film. This way the audience would recognise what film the review was from by looking at the main image. I changed the hue and saturation of my main image on both my film poster and magazine review to make it black and white. This was so the image ensured both my series that tied in with the film genre. After presenting my final products to my classmates, who are all within my target audience, I was given some helpful feedback to improve both my film and ancillary text. My audience said that the cuts used in my film meant that the film didn't flow and caused confusions. To overcome this problem, I added an effect called Cross Dissolve to give the effect of real time between scenes. This made my film flow more and allowed my audience to easily identify which scene had finished and when there was a new scene. From seeing my magazine review, the majority of my audience felt that it was too spacious and more needed to be added. They suggested it to be a good idea to include an interview, question, time section, as this would fill up space and is found in many film reviews. I took their advice on board and included an interview with the main actress in my film. After seeing the improvements I had made, my audience said that the magazine looked a lot more realistic and that they are now more attracted to it as the interview has filled the space and made the review more eye-catching and appealing. Looking at my film poster, my audience said that there was again too much empty space on it. They gave me the idea to add some star ratings to the poster to fill in the space. I added a star rating to my poster which made it look more professional and appealing for the audience as well as just filling up the space. My audience felt from watching my first draft film that some of the shots I used lasted for too long and they said that this made the film seem less scary as they just dragged on. I instead cut these shots to no more than 2-3 to three seconds so that the action was quick to create suspense which would add fear in my film. For the researching stage of my coursework, I had access to the internet where I was able to look up information on current media, films, posters and magazine reviews which would enable me to incorporate real conventions into my own product to make it as authentic and successful as possible. I recorded my film using one of the school cameras. This allowed me to film a realistic media product at my low budget. I used Final Cut Express to edit my film. This allowed me to cut any shots which had gone wrong and cut off anything that was not needed. This also allowed me to make my film as successful and real as possible with ease. With the use of Final Cut, I was able to ensure that there were no errors in my film. Final Cut Express also allowed me to add the effects which were needed. I used many cross-dissolve effects to count for the time in my film and allow the audience to notice when there would be a new scene. These added to the mysterious atmosphere of my film and allowed it to flow. 
I used Adobe Photoshop to create my film poster and film magazine review. This helped me to create the most authentic and professional and serious text possible. Using Photoshop allowed me to create a realistic method for my poster and magazine review. I had a wide range of colours and fonts to choose from to make my masthead fit my genre. I was also able to change the human saturation of my main image to make that fit my genre as well. Although I had access to a good range of new media technologies, my film did not compare to the big British films of today, such as 4321. This was mainly due to my budget. Being a school project, I did not have any money to spend in the making of my film, whereas big British films have a good amount of money to spend on more technology and props, etc. Another reason my film did not compare with the British films of today was because of my time limit. I did not have as much as time to make my film as would have been spent in creating films such as 4321. I also had other projects around this one to get on with from other subjects I study. Although I added the improvements suggested by my classmates and friends, I still felt that there was something missing from both my poster and all page spread magazine review. I decided to print off both my ancillary texts and hand them out to a range of people around my school, asking them to leave notes for any improvements. This worked well as I was given feedback which allowed me to further improve both texts. I was given the suggestion to add a quote for the star rating on my poster as this would make it look more realistic and professional. I was also given the suggestion to add more images from my film to my magazine review. This filled in the space and made my magazine review more appealing.